Hello, I am Sung Jun Na from Seoul National University. I'm going to present about the entire 2020 challenge on image and video deblurring. This challenge was jointly organized with my colleagues Sang Hyun Son, Radu Timofte, and Gang Mu Lee. Before going into the challenge details, let's review the 2019 challenge as we succeeded. In the entire 2019, we hosted video deblurring and super resolution challenge consisting of four tracks, two for deblurring and two for super resolution. Total 20 teams competed in the final phase and the winning solutions showed the state-of-the-art performance. To enable the training of deblurring and super resolution methods on a high quality dataset, we presented a new dataset called REDS that refers to realistic and dynamic scenes. In the REST dataset, four types of different degraded frames are provided that correspond to the competition tracks. They are motion blur, blur with lossy compression, low resolution, low resolution with motion blur. The challenge goal was to restore the original sharp frames from the degraded observations. For the dataset details, please refer to the entire 2019 presentation slides. The winning method of the entire 2019 challenge is EDVR, Video Restoration with Enhanced Deformable Convolutional Networks. They used alignment model to compensate for the motion between frames, followed by the fusion and reconstruction modules. They rank the first place on all the four tracks consistently. Now, let's move on to the 2020 challenge. In entire 2019, we concentrated on the accuracy of the video restoration methods. In addition to the video algorithms, this year, we also evaluated the image restoration methods focusing on the deblurring task. Also, we aimed to encourage developing more practical solutions by deploying them to the mobile phones. To achieve the challenge goal, the entire 2020 challenge is organized by setting three tracks in parallel. The first track promotes developing single image deblurring solutions. Given a blurry image, the goal is to restore the result that is as much accurate as possible without considering the computational cost. The second track, on the other hand, ships the single image deblurring solutions on mobile phones and the running speed is jointly evaluated. The target platform is Android environment with Snapdragon processor. We used Google Pixel 4 and TensorFlow Lite to deploy the models. Finally, the track 3 compares the video deblurring methods that exploit the temporal information between input frames. This is the same as track 1 of 2019 challenge. The overall challenge configuration can be summarized into the following table. As track 2 employs a different environment from the other tracks, the mobile track specifics are highlighted with yellow color. For track 1 and 3, accuracy is the primary goal, while for track 2, the speed is also evaluated in terms of frames per second. The challenge lasted for the three months beginning from the end of 2019. During the development and testing phase, partial submissions were handled via Kotlin online server. The final results were submitted via email. The submissions included test restoration results as well as the source code and the fact sheets that describe the solutions. All the solutions were manually checked to be reproducible by the organizer site. Now, let's look at the challenge results. Here are the results for track 1. The left table shows the each team's contribution with their evaluated score. The right graph visualizes the PSNR with teams sorted by the ranks. 
top five solutions achieved higher accuracy compared to the baseline method. Several methods exploit multi-scale or hierarchical information by presenting new architectures. The winning method was proposed by UniA team. UniA team won the first place in track one. They proposed using white atrous block as a building block for their model. The white atrous block aggregates information from the white receptive field. By using different atrous or dilation rates in parallel, followed by a convolutional layer, they expanded the receptive field as shown in the right figure. On the other hand, OIRM team who ranked the second place proposed a fractal network. They made a residual block called AFB, attentive fractal block. A higher level AFB is constructed by using the lower level AFB as its building model with channel attention. Finally, the AFN uses the highest level AFB to restore the deblurred images. Now, this slide shows the results for track 2. In addition to the PSNR, we set the FPS score using logarithm of relative frame rates over our baseline method. The gains in speed is designed to be diminishing to prevent deploying trivial solutions that could be extremely fast without much gains in accuracy. Four solutions from three teams achieved higher scores over our baseline. The baseline is a EDSR-like small model with four rest blocks. Most methods adopted lightweight architectures and deployed them on mobile GPUs. In contrast, the winning solution from MTKUR team quantized their model to 8 bits. By doing so, their model was further accelerated by DSP via Android Neural Networks API. MTKUR team adopted a unit architecture as their backbone. The operations in the network were chosen to be DSP friendly, such as rectified linear units instead of parametric rectified linear units. They investigated into various layers as they might not be optimal for mobile accelerators. Additionally, they pruned and quantized parameters in the learning process to further compress the model. For more details, please refer to their paper. Finally, track 3 results are shown in this slide. As this track task is the same as entire 2019, we compare the result with EDBR, which is the winning solution of the entire 2019. There were attempts to use refinement modules on top of EDBR. Also, several new architectures were proposed. Unfortunately, no method improved over EDBR in terms of PSNR and SSIM. After the challenge was over, we received feedback from the participants about the future challenges. Many requested for the extension of the mobile track in terms of practical deployment, such as web application, higher resolution optimization, etc. Also, there were several teams who wanted more challenging datasets, such as real-world data and unsupervised datasets. Finally, in addition to the current quantitative metrics such as PSNR and SSIM, perceptual metrics were suggested. We will consider reflecting these feedback in the next challenges. Let me conclude this presentation by giving thanks to our sponsors. The entire 2020 workshop and the challenges were supported by them. Thank you. The REST dataset and the other related information is available on my website. Thank you for your attention.